What's going on team? Proof here and welcome to AL4 Talk More Kumo. On the standard side of things, there kind of is a deck that's becoming far and away the preferred version of the deck, which we'll get into. And on the premium side, there's kind of a, a hodgepodge of who's who, of who gets to be part of the, the consensus Kumo lineup, which does and does not use the standard card depending on the direction you want to go down, which we'll go ahead and hop into uh, once we get there. So let's get into it. And with the other cards, as I've mentioned in the, the shadow version, the shadow edition, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the triggers. I'm not going to talk about the PGs because there's not really much to get into there with those. Unless you're talking premium to where you might use a particular PG, but that's still kind of a preferential thing. But so I, won't, I'm going, bleh, I won't dive into that. So first card we have here is Stealth Beast Cat Devil, which is your standard <laughs> your standard standard starter, which is where when you ride upon it, you draw a card, which is nice for all clans. And on the premium side, you're probably not going to be using it as often. You're probably going to be going for, I think his name, I can't remember. It's the little, the little crow dude where you rest it, I think, and you put a card from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck. I forget the name of it. Somebody can remind me. <laughs> but that probably helps more versions of Morokumo. Even then, you still could use Cat Double if you so choose. And next card we have here is Stealth Dragon Amatsu Snipe, which is a really strong rear guard because unlike Funky Bazooka from Spikes, this card, you strictly just need to place a card from your deck and all versions of it get plus 5,000 power, which is really nice to get an easy 12k booster because as you get further into the game, your grade threes will more likely than not pull something from your deck for you and also synergizes with, when we'll get there, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, it synergizes with Million Rats and I think um, the Panther that comes in Morokumo. But just being able to play something from your deck and get plus 5,000 power makes so many numbers really easily and it doubles up or triples up or quadruples up depending on if you have multiples on the board because you can have two on the board they both get plus 5,000 power and then so on and so forth from there. It's really strong. And then this name is gonna kill me. <laughs> Stealth Rogue of Silence, uh, Shijimaru, Shijimaru, something like that. <laughs> He's gonna be Shiji, Shiji from now on, Shiggy, even though there's not a G there. <laughs> but. He has, he's also another really strong card that makes it into the most common um, standard versions of the deck because if I'm not mistaken, if you just boost it, if you use it to boost, the card that you boost with it still gets plus 3,000 power even if you don't have another one on the board because that goes along the lines of the, um, what's his name, Thavas, there we go. The Thavas ruling where you do you select as many as you can as long as you have at least one and then fulfill the condition from there. But it, it, it makes nice little chain sequences if you have multiples on the board, especially when you're playing Mandala Lore because they have a lot of cards that adopt the Mandala Lore name, which is really good. And even then you can still make a pseudo 10K booster. So between Amatsu, you have a, a 12K booster that you can get from time to time with Shiji here. Uh, Shiggy, you get uh, an occasional 10k booster that you can get from time to time, which really adds up for some of the pressure you can make with Morokumo. And then we have Turbulent Edge here, which is a Mandala Lord uh, name grabber. Unfortunately, it costs a Counter Blast and a Soul Blast, both of which are kind of hard to come by because Kumos didn't get a, a Soul Charger outside of riding multiple grade threes, from what I can remember, and it didn't get a form of Counter Charger, which kind of makes sense because the Zambaku stuff would just be much more incredible if it did have that. So being a, a name grabber while being a counter blast, soul blast could dip into your reserves for Mandala Lord. However, if you're going with a strictly Mandala Lord deck, you won't need to save those reserves if you don't mix in the Zambaku stuff. So you still might get a nice little uh, benefit from it. And it only lasts until end of turn, so you you would need to do it every single turn. So that's kind of a, a hard thing to do, but for a temporary name and get the buff from it, especially when you combine it with uh, Shiggy and uh, some of the other stuff that comes with it, 
it just makes up for a nice little nice little beater sometimes and then we got stealth dragon sokuku sokoku something like that these names are whole holy crap <laughs> zapper it's just the vanilla 9k that excel plans get i've seen some people talk about um running it as a one or a two of just for that first ride possibility or just for being a 9k booster that just kind of just helps make numbers at certain times i think it's pretty good it hasn't made it into the most common topping list that i've seen on the standard side and i don't suspect it to make it on the premium side either so use it as you see fit but just keep in mind that it doesn't make it into the most usual list that i've seen here we have stealth dragon imitation mandala which unlike turbulent edge is a is a continuous card and it's free so you'll need to worry about activating it turn after turn and then in addition to that if you have three or more mandala lords in name on the board which includes him imitation mandala which includes regular mandala lord which also includes uh if you activate turbulent edge he becomes a booster which you can put into the back row and make him live use it to boost up one of your other uh, mandala lords or clones of him and then keep him in the back just in case you need to push him up to the front to be able to use him as an attacker on subsequent turns it's really strong for the mandala lord deck it this is another card that didn't make it into the most common list that i've seen but if you go with strictly mandala lord like turbulent edge here he's an auto include and same as it would be on the premium side as well next up we have stealth fiend hyakumi shadow which is an interesting card because if he's just drove check you can call it to a rear guard circle if you so choose which is similar to an old general old general safe read which check the grade three can call it out so you get the immediate benefit of ha having an attack in rear guard but you lose out on the car in hand which is a nice little effect to have but it comes at the expense of being in a grade three without excel excel gift which is a little too much and as i talked about with uh, the Shadow Paladin card and other cards like it without the gift. If you don't have a good enough benefit of not having the gift, you won't make it. You won't make the cut, which is kind of the case here with Hyakumi here. So I don't think it's a good enough card to make the final cut. And the list that I've seen have kind of paid credence to that. And I don't suspect it to make it on the premium side either. Next up, we got Stealth Beast Million Rat which is a really nice card to have. First, it's an 8K. As you get further into the game with Excel and uh, protect clans against force clans, you have lower base power. But in the early game, your 8Ks line up very well with their cards. And being able to use the counter blast to call a copy from your deck, you can deck filter, get a 4K copy of rat for a turn, and you can boost up your Amatsu snipes. You can boost up your shigis, your shigis, and it just kind of makes for a nice little use early on and it doesn't conflict too heavily with uh, your Zambaku if you're going for it because it's only a one counter blast type of thing that you can use on demand if you need it to. And it doesn't hurt the Mandala Lord either just because it's a nice little body to have in general. And then on your next turn, you have two 8Ks which can still do what they need to do. So all in all, I really like it. It's a staple in all the decks that I've seen. It might make it on the premium side as well, especially if you're going for certain versions of the deck, but I don't know too much about those particular deck makeups themselves. I just theorize that it would be a solid card to have. Next up, we got Left Arrester, which is um, premier Zambaku support and the better Arrester <laughs> because it does more stuff generally than uh, Right Arrester does, which we'll get to um, coming up next. Uh, being able to Soul Blast 1 for plus 5 makes a 24k attacker on Excel Circle, which lines up very well with your your opponent's Vanguard, especially with the Force Clans, because you hit for 24 on their 13, provided they don't hit a trigger, which forces 15k from their hand versus 10k if it was just a 22k line, which is something to keep in mind as well. And it also fits in with the Zambaku combo, and it's probably the one you want you can throw away more of, technically, because you just need to have one around and be able to use it, unlike Rider Wrestler, which we'll hop into here, which is the one you need to have be more careful of using because you, this is the one that works when it's placed down because you don't want to lose them all before you can get your combo off. And it's also the more expensive one, so that Counter Blast 2 really, really hurts. But if you're playing against certain clans, which are 
have more threatened vanguards that you want to lock down or you're playing against more aggressive clans that take more take more of a hit from the lockdown happening this is where it would come in handy more often than not however beyond that it's just a vanilla 9k so be be mindful of that as you're playing the deck next up stealth beast bloody mist which is the little panther dude i was talking about which is the grade 2 version of million rats unfortunately it's not enough space for him to be utilized outside of a mandala lord deck maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the counter blast cost gets a little bit too much where you're already trying to commit some for Mandala Lord himself, some for Zambaku, some for Million Rats and so on and so forth. So unfortunately he doesn't make the cut in standard and I don't suspect it to make it the cut in premium either where there's more grade twos that he would have to compete with. And then we got probably my favorite card out of the Morokumo set, uh, Twin Swordsman Musashi. And this card is amazing because it it exists as a 27k on excel circle if you meet the condition and then on top of that it forces your opponent to call two cards from hand that they want to to guard it from hand itself so if your opponent uses a pg they need to throw away an additional card on top of their discard for their their pg to be able to stop musashi that way or they need to throw down two of their high value shields that they would need to use for other stuff going into the future and it's just a really strong card it pretty much puts a lot of carry. It does a lot of carrying for the deck at certain moments in the game, especially if you go for the lockdown and just try to tear through your opponent's hand. Unfortunately, if you're going for the decks that I've seen, there's not enough space to use multiple M beyond a couple. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're going for um, trying to mash together the Zambaku um, Mandala Lord components in the grade three slots because of course you're gonna run out of slots for grade threes to use for musashi however still my favorite card my personal my personal favorite card he is the boy of this clan and yeah i just enjoy it and then we have one of the big two grade threes a uh, uh, covert demonic dragon mandala lord so as i talked about with turbulent edge here he kind of dips into the reserves for mandala lord here as you can see because that counter blast soul blast cost just kind of adds up if you try to use turbulent edge too many times to keep it going with your lack of ability to refund those particular resources and being able to have it as your vanguard as your first place you can just copy two cards on the board which is really nice because you just if you have two cards on the board you rob mandala lord you just plus two your field for counter blast soul blast cost which is really really strong and then on top of that you can give all your units with the same name plus 3000 power so if you're playing a more dedicated mandala lord deck you can just shove it into the soul and now suddenly some of your cards can hit um more magical numbers against your opponent's vanguard and i can't tell you how many times facing other clans where if they suddenly get plus 3000 power and they hit for a 15k shield on my force vanguard i'm in a much tighter spot than i was before so so all in all, when you wrap it together, it's a really strong card. And I can see why the decks that I've seen try to mash, mash it, mismatch it together with the Zambaku stuff because it makes an incredible backup ride if you miss Zambaku on time. And it doesn't hurt your resources too much to still play into the, the Zambaku side of your deck if you need it to. And then the ultimate card here, we got Swift Archer Fusa Fushashi. Ooh, Fushimi. <laughs> so... Uh, during your turn, if you meet the condition, you can become 24k on an Excel circle or just a 14k beater in general, which is good. And then on place, you can use it to snipe out one of your opponent's um, back row units with one of your units. So you burn the attack, but if your opponent is a 9k and you have an 8k on the board or something, you can use it to um, beat down your opponent's 8k, 7k in the back row if they have a, a target targetable unit. Otherwise, it's just uh, just vanilla beyond that. Well, not truly vanilla because it still has the, the continuous condition. But at the same time, it's free. And we like free when it comes to these counter blast heavy clans. So he easily makes it into the four of slot along with um, right arrestor, left arrestor and the, the top in list that I've seen. And there's not really much more to say about it. It just kind of does what it does well enough to make it into the final cut. 
And last but not least, we got Dueling Dragon Zambaku, which is the big boss of the clan uh, coming out of the set here. And he's the one that meets the lockdown condition, which he makes your opponent not able to ride their next turn if you meet um, his condition, which needs to work by paying the cost. You check for both the wrestlers, and from there you can lock down your opponent's Vanguard from being able to re-ride, which is good against Kagros, which want to keep riding Vanguards to put to stack gifts on the Vanguard to get to Waterfall. It's good against OTT, especially if you lock them on a particular Vanguard. I would think you would want to put them on Imperial Daughter more because Amaterasu can still keep her her top check going regardless. Uh, and just, if, you, if your opponent gets stuck on their worst grade three ride, you can lock them into that for multiple turns and just build the advantage in your favor that way. And then go into the lockdown if you need to. And all in all, I can see why this card is putting the hype on Morikumo just because the threat of the lockdown itself makes your opponent play differently sometimes to where it's like oh crap they have two counter blasts and I'm on I'm on grade three if I give them this third counter blast then they're gonna lock me down I won't be able to to live two turns of having um without my opponent's twin drive helping me out and then they just kind of waver and wallow and it kind of feeds into the Morikumo player's hands more effectively and yeah like it just kind of just puts a nice little bow together that is the more kumo support which i think is really strong on the standard side a little less so on the premium side but that's just because there's a lot of strong decks and premium already and as i mentioned from the top of the the video here like you can make a dedicated zambaku deck and tack on strides you can make a dedicated mandal lord deck and tack on strides you can make like maybe sheer yuki deck and then find what you need from the standard support and throw it in there as well. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a, a build a bear of decks where you can just take the pieces you need and just throw it together as long as it makes sense, of course. And you can call it a deck there on the premium side. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for the feedback and the positive comments that I got for the shadow video. I hope to keep that train going with this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. And until next time, peace. Be easy. Listen.